Before they take over the world, many experts say they will take over your job. That's right, according to my next guest. It's happening so fast, there's absolutely nothing that can be done. But he has a solution for the best way humans can live and thrive when artificial intelligence or robots do all of the thinking. Joining me now, author of the book, Driver in a Driverless Car, and Car uh, Carnegie Mellon University Distinguished Fellow and Professor Vivek Wadwa. Uh, thanks for joining us. You know, of course, this is a topic that gets uh, more scrutiny and intensity every day. A piece on 60 Minutes. We know Elon Musk is warned against it. Uh, we know Stephen Hawking's warned against it. And I always refer back to this famous Oxford report. It was huge. Oxford University saying at least 47 percent of all jobs in America are at risk. What are your thoughts? Charles, that's an underestimate. Let's look forward a little bit. In the next two or three years, on our interstate highways, we're going to have trucks that drive themselves. The same time period, we're going to have Ubers that don't have human drivers in them. And then we're going to start going to supermarkets in which everything is automated, that you're going to go to the checkout and, and it'll autom there won't be a cashier there because it'll scan what you have as you take it off the shelf and automatically bill you. And then you're going to have drones that deliver not only your pizza, but your morning latte and your packages. And then in the next five or seven years, we're going to have digital assistants on our phones that are doctors that monitor us 24-7 and give us medical advice. Almost every profession is going to be automated, and the number of human beings doing it is going to be much less over the next five to ten years or so. So it's going to be you know, dramatic, traumatic, amazing, all at the same time. And this happens in the next five, ten, fifteen years or so. You know, uh, we know the, the story of uh, King Lud, if you will, but the, also the story of William Lee, who uh, invented the stocking frame knitting machine. In, in 1589, he goes to, to Queen Elizabeth I, does a demonstration, thinking that she would award him a patent. Instead, she's so frightened of what she's seeing, saying that it would turn her constituents into peasants, she banishes him. He takes his technology to France. Uh, what does a government do in a situation like this when politicians promise us jobs and you're telling us we're going to lose millions of them over the next five years? Well, there's good news here in the short term. In the next five, ten years, we're going to be creating jobs. We're going to have an economic boom in America like never before because even for these new trucks, you need to program them. You need to now set up new infrastructure. Whereas we build all these new technologies, we've got to build the drones, we've got to build the robots that are going to do manufacturing. Well, with all due respect, we've got to build the new factories because... because manufacturing is going to come back. We're going to be creating many jobs in the short term. Right. Long term, they begin to disappear. There's an opportunity over here because as this happens, the cost of everything drops. If we have doctors on our phones who can give us medical advice, we won't fall sick as often. Right. So and, that, and by the way, David, that's one of the reasons people are arguing why the Fed should slow down. But I do. We have less than a minute because we had some breaking news and an exclusive interview. And I want to I want to tap your brain in that minute on two things. A, the realization that people who have been working on assembly lines for 30 years, are you going to be able to retrofit their skills so that they can do it now, so that they can actually work on automated cars the same way they worked on a Chevy engine in 1985? Well, some will, the majority won't, and that's what my book, Driving the Driverless Car, was about, saying, look, here's a good, here's a bad, here's we have to, why we have to be excited, here's why we have to worry. So it's, it's everything at the same time. We can't yeah. stop it. No one can stop this. That's what Joseph Semperton talked about, right? The, create, the great wealth and the changes, but the disruption. By the way, Arthur C. Clarke said this is good news. It will free us up from 99% of labor, and we can just go on to pursue loftier things like using 90% of our brain. Vivek, thank you very much. Hey, China also has AI TV anchors, by the way, so you need to worry, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> How do you know I'm not a robot? Thank you very much. <laughs> See you soon.